Hey everyone, Chris from Xerofox 3D here. Um, right, this is the assembly video for Hermes, which is my um, external solar node um, for the rack whiz block. Um, now, this is the assembly guide for um, the kit that you receive if you purchase it from me direct. So you actually receive it semi-assembled like this. Um, if you printed the case yourself, and there's another video, the intro video, that has a full set of build instructions uh, that includes uh, you know, everything from it in the bare parts, basically. So I'm going to try and record this as um, uh, in a one take, basically. And if I make any mistakes, um, you'll see me correct them, and then you won't make those mistakes, hopefully. So before I begin, I just want to highlight something that's really, really important, which is batteries. Now you don't receive batteries with Hermes, uh, you have to source the 18650s yourself. Um, I have a link in the UK where you can, uh, you can buy good quality cells, but they're widely available uh, all over the world. Now, the important thing here is, if you look at the battery holder, uh, the markings on it show alternating battery polarities, where it goes positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. That is not how this works though. This is a parallel holder. Notice the springs all at the top of the holder. That is the negative end for all of the cells. So when you insert the cells, it should be the negative end on every single position. So I'll insert the cells now so you can see how they go. So negative at the top, again, negative at the top, negative at the top, and negative at the top. Now the switch I always send in the off position, which is pointing to the right. But um, just be aware, if you did put them in the wrong way, you're going to get some magic smoke, which is not good. So make sure you put them in negative to the top. The first thing you really need to do is take your Bluetooth antenna. Now, my Bluetooth antenna has been used before, so I've ripped, peeled off the sticky backing. Um, yours, fingers crossed, will be brand new. doesn't really matter, but you can peel off the sticky backing. And then there's a special slot where... I've actually thinned the, the outer shell to improve the Bluetooth signal, basically. So that's, uh, that means installing first. You want to route the cable so that it um, comes out over this right-hand side, because that's where the, um, uh, where the connector is. This label is a little bit fiddly, so it can be a good idea to maybe remove that. Um, the actual rack itself then wants to go in. Uh, now this is a 19003, uh, you can use the 1907, there's screw holes up the top for the 1907. Now it's just a case of, a, now I've got to do this without headbutting the camera, which is uh, fun. But it's basically in like so, and then you get your screws in the kit. And you will want a screwdriver, just, it's helpful to have that handy. So that is the rack installed. Now we want to connect our antennas up. So we have the coax from the end type on this one. It's basically exactly the same if you order the SMA. The cable's a little shorter, but. And then the Bluetooth antenna. And then you can take your power connector. Now note the polarity should look like this. The red going to the red dot on the rack board. Our, power, our switch is in the off position, so there's no danger of it turning on. Now, that should be all your cables installed. Right, let's talk solar panels. Now, this is a typical solar panel uh, that you can pick up on Amazon, etc. It's a panel made by EasyViz for, I believe, a video doorbell or a security camera. It's 6 watt. It's just about sufficient for... Uh, British weather, shall we say, with the racks from the test that I did. Um, it, it's good enough. Now, they all come with a USB cable on the end. Now, we want to run this cable not into the USB port, but into the solar port uh, on the rack. So what we do is we cut the end uh, off the USB cable that comes with it, and we want to strip back the, um, the white outer uh, shielding to reveal the two inner cables. There's a red and a black. 
Now I supply, oopsie, I supply with the kit the solar cable that you need. Now we need to join these two together. Now you know there's a red and a black. Now I supply in the kit these little crimps that mean you don't have to solder anything. And I'll show you how to use these now. What we want to first do is run our cable up through the hole in the bottom of Hermes. Push her up through. Get Hermes out of the way for a sec, give us some space. Now the cable that I provide is probably a bit too long to be quite honest with you. I might start sending them out already snipped shorter, but you probably want to snip it so that it's a bit shorter. Now what you want to do is to use these crimps, it's a case of you want to insert one red cable into here and another red cable, the other red cable from the connector into this side. Make sure they're pushed all the way in. And then what we now need to do is basically put some downward pressure uh, on this to crimp them together. Now, I believe you're best doing it with pliers. It does need a fair bit of pressure, so uh, it may be the hammer. We'll try doing it with our finger which I think is enough. Um, now, no, I don't think that's closed it enough, so I think we do need pliers. So, one second. Here we go. So, and you basically, you need to make sure that this orange button is flush with the body of the, um, of the crimp. So there you go, so that's gone all the way through. Now, what I'll do is I'll do the other one and then we'll check the polarity to make sure that, um, sorry, we'll check the continuity with the multimeter just to make sure it's uh, it's worked. But same deal with this one. So black into black. Now there is a conductive gel inside these uh, as well. So you might, you might see a little bit of oozing out the bottom, but it doesn't matter. Right, now to check the continuity, I have the female version of the port here just to test it now. I'm doing this just to show that it works. There you go, we have continuity. So the crimps work, have indeed worked as planned. So now we can pull this, now we can pull this cable back through. Connect to there, and then it's just a case of, I believe it's again red to the inside. And bingo, that's our solar cable crimped in. However, what you can also do is just to um, help uh, take, take the strain off the cable, is I provide four cable ties in here, and there's cable tie points here in the case. So. So, and there's actually another cable tie point under here, which is being hidden by this silly little Bluetooth label. Just grab the end of the cable tie. So we can secure the solar cable in two different places, basically. If you don't have butterfingers like me. Well, like so. So that should, that should provide some strain relief for the solar cable. And we want to snip off the ends of the cable ties without accidentally cutting any cables, because that would be very silly. 
points. Uh, just to touch upon cable management again, um, there are two further cable tie points down here on the base. Um, these are for securing both the coax and any solar cable or USB cable that you might run to it. Um, there is one internally uh, on the SMA connector version as well. So what you can do is, um, I think this is this is a little fiddly to get these cable ties in, I won't lie. Now, the observant among you will notice I have again popped off my coax cable. So perhaps, perhaps it should be a case of connecting up your coax cable should probably be the last step, not the first one. So there you go, we've, uh, we've learned something together. But there you go, coax is all connected, solar cable connected, cable management all sorted. So now it's just a case of uh, putting the cover on. So now the without, without headbutting the camera. The, um, the bottom screws, what you want to do is you, you just want to make sure that they're slightly loosened, uh, slightly loosened off because you don't want to pinch the gaskets in the wrong order. Um, and then we can basically put the, making sure your gasket's aligned, put your front cover on. Then it's a case of turning over and using the six included hex bolts. Now these should all push in because the screws are all sized correctly. It will be, it will be tight, but then it'll push all the way pretty much in. Now notice there is a gap here all the way around because that's basically the width of the gasket. Now gaskets only need compressing around 30%. So what we want to do is we want to wind these screws in until they're pretty much flush, I believe it is. And you don't have to go much further than that. Now, important to also note that um, if you feel any binding in the nut, wind back. Um, because you can cross thread. Um, I insert all the nuts and test all the nuts before I send them out to make sure that they're uh, positioned correctly. So it should be fine. And you can see this one's working first time. So there you go. So you wind in the, the bolts until they pretty much stop. And then you only need to give them maybe a quarter turn further to just compress that gasket. Then it's just a case of tightening the bottom two screws. And that's the main body assembled. Now, if you purchased the, uh, the mount, now the mount is applicable if you are attaching Hermes to a small N-type antenna that doesn't have its own mount, um, or if you're using an SMA antenna with the SMA uh, base um, and you want to attach it to a pole. This has a, you can see a slot for the pole basically and you get two big cable ties that go around it. Again, all of the square nuts for this are already inserted and it's just a case of, I'm not going to show this, it's just a case of um, putting it on the back and uh, screwing in your four 18 millimeter hex bolts. Um, one final thing to mention, um, if you are mounting it directly to um, a large N-type antenna, directly on a pole, um, you can actually um, secure Hermes uh, to the pole. Um, if you imagine this goes onto the N-type antenna, you've got your pole off to the side here, maybe mounted to the antenna. You can spin Hermes round a little and use one of the cable tie points to secure it to the pole to stop it from um potentially rotating maybe um say say in high winds etc i did that was something i considered but that is it hermes assembled ready to go